My name is Nutifafa Adete. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Biosystems Engineering and Soil Sciences at University of Tennessee. I'm also UT Soil and Nutrient Management Specialist, and I'm housed at the West Tennessee Research and Education Center located in Jackson. My talk today will focus on impact of nitrogen rate nitrogen source and placement method on ammonia volatilization in dry land corn production system. I want to focus on ammonia volatilization because this is one of the nitrogen loss pathways that can easily be ignored because you don't typically see that loss occurring. So I'll talk about some of these management practices, how they can influence ammonia volatilization. So in Tennessee, most of the corn growers use either urea or urea ammonium nitrate. And these nitrogen sources, these are very susceptible to ammonia volatilization. I'll get that into that in a moment. We also know that plants use nitrogen either as nitrate or ammonia. Sometimes they may take very small amount of urea fertilizer, but mainly they take nitrogen in a form of nitrate and ammonia. So when your surface apply that urea based fertilizer, it has to be converted to ammonia and then to nitrate for that plant to be able to take up that nitrogen. So what is urea hydrolysis? That's the critical process that we need to understand because it plays an important role when it comes to ammonia volatilization. So urea hydrolysis occurs when urease enzyme helps speed up the breakdown of urea to ammonium under adequate temperature and soil moisture. So simply that is urea hydrolysis, the conversion of urea to ammonia. This chart here is very important to ammonia volatilization. Uh, so this is nitrification over time. On the y-axis, that is percent nitrification. So how much of the urea-based fertilizer is converted to nitrate. And then on the x-axis, that is just time in wave. For my talk, I just want to focus on week three or the number three. What you realize is that if you, I should mention that these lines here represent different uh, temperatures ranging from 37 degrees Fahrenheit to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. And what you realize is that when you apply your fertilizer at a temperature below 42 degrees Fahrenheit, you only have only, you have less than 20% of your urea being converted to nitrate after three weeks. Again, as the temperature increased to 52, what you realize is that uh, you still have just a little over 20% of the urea that's been converted into nitrate. But what happens is that when you get to 75%, which most growers will put out that nitrogen fertilizer, you could easily have all of the urea-based fertilizer being converted to nitrate. So why is this information very important? In my previous slide, I said that first urea is converted to ammonium and then from ammonium to nitrate. So what we're trying to see is that there's a very short window for the conversion of urea to ammonium. And uh, between ammonium and nitrate, that's when we have ammonia volatilization occurring. So ammonia losses typically occur within the first three weeks. But the peak time, and I'll show you data to support that, 
that within the first five days, those are the days that you have to pay particular attention because those are when you have significant losses occurring. So I want to touch briefly on the different nitrogen loss pathways. There are several of them. The common ones are ammonia volatilization, denitrification, leaching, and surface runoff. But for my talk today, I'll focus on ammonia volatilization. So typically, we ask growers to split apply their nitrogen if they are putting out more than 120 pounds of nitrogen per acre. And the side dress application is usually between the V4 to V6 growth state. So when a grower, when a grower, sorry, when a grower applies that surface, the urea-based fertilizer on the soil surface, it's converted to ammonium. If there's rainfall, that ammonium is incorporated into the soil, so that nitrogen becomes fairly stable. There's no losses occurring, no very minimal losses occurring. However, we know that rainfall is uncertain, and there's no rainfall, and that ammonium is sitting on the soil surface, it gets converted to ammonia. So in the now share, ammonia volatilization occurs when the ammonium that is released from the surface applied urea-based fertilizer is converted into ammonia gas. So how do we control ammonia volatilization. Again, I wanted to throw this in here because it's very important. Um, there is a group or a general term that's called enhanced efficiency nitrogen fertilizers. And these fertilizers are either prepared by chemically treating or physically coating that urea or UN fertilizer to stabilize that nitrogen and to release it over time. There are two broad categories. There's the stabilized end fertilizer and there's the slow release nitrogen fertilizer. So the stabilized nitrogen fertilizer may contain one or more chemical that extend the stability of the standard form of that nitrogen compared to um, the untreated form. And examples will include super U, agrotene, and anvil. The second class is the slow release nitrogen fertilizer. This pretty much, you're putting a physical coating on that fertilizer to slow the release of nitrogen over time. Examples include sulfur coated urea as well as environmentally smart nitrogen or ESA. Stabilized nitrogen fertilizers are categorized into two groups. We have the urease inhibitors and then the nitrification inhibitors. So the urease inhibitors, these are products that are effective or very reliable when controlling ammonia volatilization. And we'll talk about some of these products in subsequent slides. One other thing I want to throw out there is control release fertilizers, uh, similar to slow release nitrogen fertilizer. So let's talk about some of the common nitrogen stabilizers. As mentioned, I did talk about the fact that we have urea inhibitors that work well against ammonia volatilization and nitrification inhibitors that work against um, nitrification. So these urea inhibitors, most of them, what they try to do is to limit the function of the urea enzyme to speed up that urea hydrolysis process. There are a few products on this table that have been tested in, at UT, and most of these products have worked to reduce um, have worked to reduce ammonia volatilization as well as increase yield. One other point I want to note on this table is the third column is NBPT. So NBPT is N-butyl phosphoric triamine. That is the active ingredient that most nitrogen stabilizers have. If you notice that different concentrations of this um, active ingredient, 
A product may contain this active ingredient, but may not necessarily be effective. That's why it's very important to choose a product that has been proven to work. Now I'm gonna spend time to talk about ammonia volatilization study that I have personally been involved in at UT. <laughs> So in my ammonia volatilization studies, I used the semi-closed chamber method. What it is, is that we install this clear plexiflex glass uh, about four inch into the soil in the field. We apply a nitrogen fertilizer treatment. And then what we do is that we trap the ammonia that is coming from the soil as well as from the fertilizer using foam. These are one inch foam that have been treated with phosphoric acid and glycerol. So NH3 ammonia, when it reacts with the acid, which is H plus, we get ammonia, which is adsorbed onto the surface of the sponge. So what we do, we have two sponge layers. We have one that is directly trapping whatever ammonia is coming from the soil as well as of our applied treatment. And we have a second sponge, which is gonna trap whatever ammonia that is coming from the atmosphere. And we've got this cross PVC pipe that would help in circulation, aid in circulation. And then we cover it with a bucket. So this is how it looks like in the field. So we go in there every other day we have specific time where we go in there and swap the bottom sponges only and we put in a new sponge in there what we do is that we bring the sponges into the lab and we extract that ammonia using 100 mils of two molar kcl solution we extract it and then we send it to dr florence rob Dr. Robert Florence at the Soil Plant and Pest Center in Nashville to get ammonium and nitrate readings. And based off of that, we calculate our ammonia loss. So that's just a simple method and it's worked very effectively. One advantage this has is that we're able to compare multiple treatments. So now I will go deeper into some of the work that we've been doing. So we'll look at the impact of different nitrogen sources on ammonia volatilization losses. So I'll be talking about, I'll be comparing this urea, which is a dry material with 46% nitrogen, ammonium nitrate, which has 34% nitrogen, and liquid UAN, which has 32% nitrogen. All of these materials were applied at the same rate of 120 pounds of nitrogen per acre. That's a site dress treatment. So the first graph we wanna look at is looking at ammonia loss at sampling on the y-axis, which is the percent of site dress in. And I did mention it was about 120 pounds of nitrogen per acre. On the x-axis is the time, that is day after we applied the nitrogen fertilizer. What I want you to take away from this graph is the fact that two things, the peak ammonia volatilization loss for urea and UAN occurred within the first three days. So it's very critical if we can minimize ammonia loss from occurring the first three days, you can improve the efficiency of your nitrogen fertilizer. One, the second point is the fact that for broadcast ammonium nitrate, we could barely see any nitrogen loss occurring as ammonia volatilization. Next, we wanna look at cumulative ammonia loss over the 21 days. On the y-axis is your cumulative ammonia loss, which is percent of citrus. In. And on your x-axis, we have time in days after nitrogen fertilizer application. 
Again, if you look at ammonium nitrate, we have less than 1% nitrogen loss as ammonia. However, if you compare urea, which had the highest ammonia loss of 23% compared to broadcast UAM, which had about 16.9%. What tells us is that if you're using ammonia, you if you're using, sorry, if you're using urea fertilizer, you're likely to have higher losses than liquid UAM. Again, we know that you, liquid UAM contains 50% urea, 25% nitrate, and 25% ammonium it has less urea, and that may account for the lower losses that we see. So I just want to throw this in there. So whenever we added a nitrogen stabilizer to urea, we treated it with ANVOL, which is by Cook Agronomic Services we saw a significant reduction from 23% to 5.3% in terms of ammonia loss. And then when we treated the liquid UAN with that same nitrogen stabilizer, we saw ammonia loss being reduced from 16.9 to 10.8%. Now, for those of you that are very curious about how the yield results looks like. Again, whenever we simply broadcast urea, we had about don't treated urea, we had about 204 bushel. Whenever we added the nitrogen stabilizer, remember there was a reduction in ammonia loss from 23 to 5%. Okay, when we look at our yield, our yield increased from 204 to 223 bushel, almost a 19 plus increase in yield with the addition of the anvil. For broadcast UAN, the yield was around 226. Addition of anvil only added four bushel yield increase to our anvil. Now we want to look at the impact of nitrogen rates on ammonia loss as well as yield. So in this study, we looked at five different nitrogen rates from zero to 240. And what do you see here? What is very interesting about the rate study, and I've seen this in another study that I did in Cardin. For every 60 units of nitro, 60 pounds of nitrogen per acre that we saw, you could see that ammonia volatilization more than doubled. It's very, very, very interesting. It wasn't, uh, we didn't see maybe a third increase, but ammonia volatilization just doubled. So one thing as rate increases, ammonia loss also increased. And for each additional 60 unit of nitrogen that was added, ammonia volatilization doubled. In terms of yield, we saw um, yield increase with increasing N rate. But what I want you to pay attention here is that whenever we added the nitrogen stabilizer at the 60 rate, ammonia loss decreased from Three, almost 4% to about 1%. And at the 180 rate, ammonia loss decreased from 17% to about 4%. And let's see how this translated into yield. So if you look here, you can see the vast differences between um, yield, yield from urea treated with 60 pounds of untreated uh, urea compared to 60 pounds of urea that was treated with amber, about a whopping 34 bushel increase. And a similar trend is seen as we increased um, nitrogen application rates. Next, I wanna talk about the impact of nitrogen placement on ammonia 
loss. So I'm comparing two methods here. One, we dribble the UAN down the middle of the rules. And then for the other, we just surface broadcast the UAN. Again, we want to just look at ammonia loss at sampling. Again, you can see the peak ammonia loss occurring within the first three days. That is one important factor or point I want each one of us to take from this graph. In terms of the cumulative ammonia loss over the 21 days, again, we saw that surface broadcast UAN without any type of nitrogen stabilizer has significantly higher ammonia loss compared to whenever we dribble the UAN in between the rows. And regardless of the placement method, whenever we added an nitrogen stabilizer, in this case, we use AMPO. For the dribble, ammonia loss decreased from 12.5% to 8%. And then for the broadcast UAN, ammonia loss decreased from 169 to 10.8%. Let's look at how this performed in terms of yield. So for the broadcast treatment, yield was around 226 without any kind of stabilizer. Whenever we added stabilizer, we had only four bushel of yield increase. For the dribble placement without any stabilizer, we had about 227 bushel. Whenever we added a stabilizer, we had about 234 bushel which across mainly um, seven bushel yield increase. So what is the take home message? So when you're using urea-based fertilizer, it's very important to pay attention to the source. When it's untreated, we know that urea is more susceptible to ammonia volatilization than ammonium nitrate as well as urea ammonium nitrate. We also know that ammonia volatilization does increase with increasing nitrogen application and surface broadcast UAN is much more susceptible compared to dribble in between the row. A point that is worthy of noting is the fact that urea or UAN treated with a proving stabilizer is effective in reducing ammonia volatilization, regardless of rate, source, and placement method. Uh, this is my contact information. I have my office, my mobile, and email address. You can reach me through any of these means. You can also access the soil and nutrient management website using the link that is provided here. Thank you.